Welcome to Professor Sky's Spam Channel. This is where I discuss anything that is not new music. And about once a month, I have been having this series going where I, I talk about YouTubers from a sort of academic standpoint. You see, I, I am a real academic. I got the proof right here. It's my doctorate. <laughs> I am a professor of French. And as an academic, you know, I read a lot of analysis and I see a lot of discourse and I have come to realize since watching a lot of YouTube and making a lot of videos mostly about music reviews on my other channel I've really learned that the place for the best discourse in the world is happening on YouTube and that in the future people are going to look back at this time this explosion of the democratization of knowledge and, and information and they're really going to see YouTube as the place so this is both a sort of appreciation for YouTubers, but also it's a, an attempt to catalog for future academics what was the state of YouTube discourse, this extremely high level of discourse, which as an academic, I'm, I'm tempted to dismiss because most of the people I talk about, they don't have doctorates. They didn't go through what I went through. They didn't have their qualifying exams or write their dissertations. I don't know what to tell you. There's so much good information out there. And, and the thing that interests me the most the thing that interests me the most of anything in existence is analysis. You know, I think I love anything that human beings create. Like, like in, my, in my opinion, I'm a humanist, and anything that a human being creates is evidence of human creativity and human genius. And analysis of anything that human beings create is further evidence of that great human excellence and genius. So I've spent my entire life analyzing things that humans have made. Now, I can't analyze nature. I don't know what a tree is. But I majored in art history in, in college and French. So, you know, I, I analyze literature, I analyze film, I analyze art. On my other YouTube channel, I analyze music. You know, I make hour-long videos about, <laughs> about that Drake album, you know. But there's these weird limitations on things that, that I don't understand, that are human-made, that are art. And I've had a hard time with like cars, understanding the beauty of the content and form of cars. I've spent some time on it, but I don't really consider myself to be a real, uh, I'm not really able to analyze the art of car making. Even architecture, even though I studied in art history, it's still quite a challenge to me at times to understand the beauty of a building. But by far, the thing I've had the most difficulty getting a handle on is fashion. I, I want to get it. I do. I've always wanted to understand fashion. I've never wanted to be, you know, one of those people who's like, well, look at that. They're just wearing a bunch of pigeons on their head. How is that fashion? Who's going to wear that? I've never been that guy. <laughs> but, but I've also been the guy who watches a, a runway show, and I'm just like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't quite get it. So that's why I want to talk to you today about Bliss Foster. Now, who is Bliss Foster? According to him, I've watched... <laughs> In the past 48 hours, I think I've watched 40 of his videos. I don't know how many of his videos I've watched. I stumbled on his videos very recently. I instantly joined his Patreon, and I've just been watching it. And I just want to share it, because he refers to his audience as, quote, a small subculture of fashion obsessives. I am not a member of fashion obsessives. I mean, I dress okay. You know, shirts are shirts okay. Jacket's pretty nice. It's good green color. I like to dress well, but I'm certainly not a part of a small subculture of fashion obsessives. So why and how could I be so interested watching a video channel dedicated to a small subculture of fashion obsessives to whom I do not belong? And I never will belong. I see the way this guy dresses. I don't want to dress like him. I see the people who he admires and how they dress people. I don't want to dress like them either. But the thing that he does is he manages to really explain the beauty and the joy of analyzing fashion. He helps me to see the art. And if you're like me, if you're somebody who loves human creation, who loves analyzing human creation, and you have this blind spot to fashion, Bliss Foster is the greatest gift. He is, and this is going to sound like hyperbole, but one of the best teachers on YouTube. He truly is. And I'll explain to you why in specific with analyzing certain videos of his and in general. If you've never seen my channel before, I don't edit. <laughs> I don't include clips from other things. So you're just going to have to follow my words, okay? Um, 
you know, sort of general points. You know, he, he definitely wears fashionable items, um, but that's not the point. He isn't trying to show off all the cool stuff that he has. The main thing that he does that's so good is that he's very nurturing. He's very caring and he's very thoughtful. And I'm going to start doing this on my other channel and on this one. He emphasizes all the time that he reads every single one of his comments. And then I read all my comments. <laughs> you know, I'll have videos with thousands of comments on them and I'll read them all. And he tells you every single video and he makes you want to comment and he makes you feel welcomed. And it's this very closed off world, you know, a world so closed off that Kanye had to say he was a god to try to get into this world, you know, like it's a very closed off world, but he makes you feel invited in. He corrects himself when he's wrong. He quotes people when they correct him. He doesn't, he's not an academic, but he's clearly very educated and he has a real academic rigor but it's kind of low-key. Like, you know, I'm a, I'm a French professor, so I've, I've worked a lot with, you know, the, the thoughts of Jean Baudrillard. Uh, and and he, he quotes Baudrillard, and I'll talk about it later more in specific, but he's the only person on YouTube I have seen who quotes Jean Baudrillard, who not only, like, the only thing people say about him is welcome to the desert of the real. Welcome to the desert of the real, he was the guy who did Matrix. Desert of the real, Matrix. Desert of the real, Matrix. I finally have somebody who is talking about Baudrillard outside of that one quote. Now, if, if he can tackle Foucault without talking about the Panopticon, we will really have gone somewhere. But he has this whole method of teaching. He has this whole way where his videos are edited but not over-edited. He doesn't have a lore. There's like one guy who shows up. I think his name is Isaac. I don't know who he is. I don't know if he's a family member or a friend or a lover. I, I don't know. He just kind of pops up every once in a while. Um, but one thing I really dislike with channels, once they get like over 100,000 subscribers, they tend to like get into lore, which I find to be distracting. There's none of that. You know, he seems to film always in his family's house. He is always over to the side, which is why I'm on the side. He does this a lot with his hands, which I think is a very good motion. You know, YouTubers really need to work more with their hands, and he does a good job with that. But he does these things like where when he gets into very serious points, he stops and says, okay, I know you're getting distracted, but focus because this part is important. You know, I do this all the time when I teach, <laughs> but when I do YouTube videos, I don't always do that. I mean, he's also, if you want to be a good YouTuber, I think he is one of the best people to watch because I think you can imitate his style fairly easily. I don't think you can imitate his excellence, but I think you can imitate his style and really focus on the restraint of his editing and how clear he is in delivering his messages. Uh, and the main thing that comes through, and this is hopefully the thing that comes through on my videos too, um, is just the joy. And, you know, it's one of my, the things I hate the most about some YouTubers is they, they show up and they complain about having to watch something because they're watching something bad and stupid. And, and they, they say, I'm watching it so you don't have to. And they complain and they complain. This guy's love of fashion and his love of his job of thinking about fashion and talking about fashion is totally infectious. It makes you love fashion more. It makes you feel like you're a part of this thing with him. It makes you feel like for the 10 minutes you're watching his videos, 20 minutes, that you are a part of this obsessive culture, that you're gonna run out and buy a Marcelaga mask. <laughs> My wife said I should not get a Marcelaga mask, so I, I guess I'm not going to. And so, you know, that's what he really communicates. So when you have this, this passion that's, that's matched with academic rigor and then communicated well, it's the perfect situation for somebody who has goodwill and wants to learn about fashion. You can take, and it took me two days, two days of binging nothing but Bliss Foster's videos. And by the end, I watched some video about some guy I'd never heard of three days ago, Jock Moose. I just, before I recorded this, I just watched a video about some guy named Jock Moose. And I was following along and I was looking at the cuts and the cloth and the thoughts and the, and the runway and the setting and everything. And I felt like I get it. I get what people get out of fashion. It is truly impressive that he's able to do that. Now, the only things that really bug me, I don't like his opening line. He says, oh, I didn't see you there. <laughs> That's very tempting. I almost had that as my tagline in the beginning. But <laughs> I don't know. It's not quite on brand. It's not actually in message with him, but it's okay. Um, and he does ask a lot to join the Patreon, which is one of those things where once you join a Patreon, you just wish people would never talk about it. But anyways, you can join my Patreon if you want. So let me give you an entry point 
into his work, which was the entry point that I had, which as always, <laughs> as always, it's always about Kanye. So he had a video explaining what is the Kanye Gap Balenciaga line. So if you know anything about me, you know that Kanye is, I am one of those guys who will talk to you about why Kanye is not only this generation's Picasso, but more important than Picasso. Okay, I'm one of those guys. I don't say it with irony. I will talk about and argue about Kanye. Like, I could literally, like, I could do a fundraiser where I talk about Kanye for 24 hours straight. And at the 24th hour when it ends, I would still have more to say. But I don't get fashion. So, so what am I, that's the thing he's most into, but I don't know how to approach it. I, I was there in Toronto at the Yeezus tour and I saw the mask and I sort of knew what he was doing, but I didn't quite get it. This video, and I'll put a link to it up there. You can just click above uh, the two lovers by Picasso. Explains exactly what that line is. What, what does Kanye do for fashion? What does fashion do for Kanye? What does the gap mean? which I understand because I'm in my 40s, but many young people don't. And then what is Balenciaga and the main designer Demna? <laughs> like, like watching this like 15 minute video unlocked everything for me. I feel like my understanding of the genius of Kanye is that much greater for watching this video. He has other videos where he talks about Kanye as well. <clears throat> he describes his, uh, the, the, the Donda shows, which I did a video on as well. And uh, he is one of the rare people on YouTube that seems to r truly get Kanye. <laughs> so there's, like, there's a lot of people who love Kanye, but their love is, uh, like, not quite uh, developed. Like, it's not quite, I'm going to sound arrogant, but not quite sophisticated enough, you know? It's sort of like they love the personality, but they don't quite understand exactly how interesting or great he is. And I will say that he's, he's one of those people there. So, so that was my start. I saw this video and it was good enough that like, you know, I, I just had a baby uh, 11 days ago. No, jeez, two weeks ago. Wow, happy birthday. Uh, I, you know, I just, so I've been really busy, so I don't have that much time, but like I had to like, I had to go change a diaper and I, and like, I didn't want to stop watching the video, you know, and, and like I was talking to my wife about the video while I was changing the diaper, like I got that into it. So immediately after that, I started going through his backlog, you know, he has a whole video about fashion terms. And it's great because he doesn't go into the super nitty gritty, but he tells you the things that you need to understand to have a global understanding of the art of fashion. He has an amazing video about anti-fashion and what does that mean, its relationship to trend. And he talks about how he loves to, that it's always useful to challenge the meaning of words. He has a whole video about avant-garde fashion where he does this crazy thing, okay, Susan Sontag, who actually came to speak to my class once when I was in college. Um, he gives Suzanne Sontag's definition of avant-garde art, experiments in form at the expense of content, something like that. And then he, he inverts it for fashion, saying experiments in content at the expense of form. And if that sounds complicated, like you don't get it, that's all right. You go over to him and he will explain it to you. It's, it's clever, it's well done, it is oddly not pretentious. Like <laughs> the level of, <laughs> The level of analysis and clarity that was needed to make that inversion is stunning. And I don't care about fashion. I don't care about Jock Moose. I don't care about the Chiquito bag. Jesus, why do I know the name of a Chiquito bag? I don't, I don't care about Tostito bags either. Cheeto bags, flaming hot Cheeto bags. You know, he explains all these terms like process and wearability. And, and then he has this other video which I would say is the second best video that I saw for a general audience. It's about how to analyze. And people will ask me often on my videos, you know, how did I get so good at analyzing things? Because you know, that, that really is my skill. Like, I mean, I, I, use, I use it on YouTube to analyze music. I use it, uh, you know, I used it on, <laughs> I used it to get this by analyzing 17th century uh, literature and, uh, you know, plays and poetry. I mean, uh, plays and uh, philosophy. I watch movies and all that, but like the skill of analysis is basically all the same. And his video about how to analyze in the future, when people ask me, Professor Sky, how do you learn to analyze things? I'm just going to send this link. He says it, and I don't like saying this because <laughs> I'm, a, you know, I'm proud. I'm a proud guy. He says it better than I could say it. 
or he says it as well as I could say it. It would be wasting my time. He, he gives this example of how he never understood this, this one designer and he, how he was t how he would watch, uh, he'd watch a show and then he'd get mad. And then he was talking about it with his mom and his mom said, well, how long did you spend watching the show? And he said, well, I just watched it once and then I, I got stuck thinking about it. And she's like, well, you need to spend more time with it. And that simple piece of information, just spend more time with it. I, I want to send this to my students. It, so often, they'll be like, I don't know how to get this. Just spend more time with it. And the thing about it that he does that's so good is he's kind to the viewer. It's okay. It's natural. You read Baudrillard and you get pissed off and you don't understand it and you just want to keep going. Just spend time with it. The key to analysis, as he says, is more time is leaning into your own experience, is not overshooting. He then has this beautiful jag where he goes on talking about research, where he quotes somebody, oh, I have one issue, sometimes he's a little bit fast and loose with his quotes. He doesn't say who said this quote, and I couldn't find it, but that research is strategically wasting time, that's beautiful. He goes through and explains the way that he does research. And it's so useful to see, because it's true, most of the research that you do leads to nothing. <laughs> like. Hey, I got a train going by. Sometimes he has a train going by in his videos. Now, I'm in like rural western New York. I don't even know where he lives, but uh, it's pretty rare to get a train. There's, that's weird there's a train there, but I don't edit. Um, you know, like research is so often wasting time. Like, like you get an idea, you know, like I'll be, I don't know, I'll, I'll be, I'll be watching a, I'll be, I'll be listening to a new album and I don't know, it'll be the album by Tyler, the creator, and I'll think there's a reference to something and then I'll look it up and then I'll find it and I'll go down this whole rabbit hole and I'll come out and I'll just say nothing. But it's strategically wasting time because that actually does lead because that helps you to narrow things down and sometimes you do make an amazing connection and in the end you had this larger base of knowledge and you've spent more T-I-M-E with the things that you're studying. I don't know why I said that like Matthew McConaughey. You know, he gives this example too of, <laughs> of these pants that were in this, um, I think it was a Balenciaga. Jesus, I don't even, I don't, the funny thing is too, is like I listen to so much rap music <laughs> that I hear all these names all the time, Balenciaga and Major Margiela and all that stuff. It's really funny to actually understand what that, what that all means. Um, but but about, about these pants and how he didn't know why they looked the way they did. And because he has this good audience, someone was able to tell him, oh, those, are, those look like prisoner pants from you know, the Eastern Bloc. And you know, like that's that example of using your experience or using the experience of others. In this amazing essay on analysis, he also talks about age, which is a little frustrating. <laughs> and he, he's about 12 years younger than me. Uh, and and as, I, as you could probably tell, I'm in awe of his uh, intellectual uh, capacity uh, to express information on YouTube in a pleasing and instructing way. Um, but it's, you know, it does help that he talks, you know, that if you're 20, because most people who watch his videos are probably in their 20s. Most people who watch my videos are in their 20s. It is a frustrating thing, but it's also true. Like, you can't, it's really hard to have the developed enough brain and enough life experience to present analysis at this level without more life experience. Just all these great, all these great pieces of advice. Don't worry about being wrong. Another thing that he does that's very useful to me is, you know, he, uh, <coughs> whoops, that's my, that's my Virgil poster. I keep that here because I went to the, the Virgil, the Virgil, uh, museum show. And like, I love Virgil Abloh, but I don't really get it. And his videos on Virgil Abloh, if you're like me and you want to get it, he will help you understand what did he do. They apparently had some kind of relationship together, but like you watch his videos about Virgil and I just, I always wanted this information. In general, what he does is he creates a sort of, a sort of like a, a pantheon. A pantheon of these fashion gods who are like the people who are the ones he focuses on the most. And you see the connections between them. And I get a certain sense. Now I know this is not a complete view because there's so many different fashion designers, but it's this world of like, like Margiela is this like godfather and then he has these like 
children that are this guy Demna working for Balenciaga and then inspired through them is Kanye and Virgil. And like we had this sort of whole kind of world. And like when you start watching these videos one after the other after the other, you see how it all comes together. Also, there's a quote that he gives from Virgil. Duchamp is my lawyer, which I did not know. <laughs> that is the most badass quote. <sighs> Even more general, he has, these, he has these things talking about trend forecasters and how they exist. And, and I think you could actually do a pretty interesting video comparing uh, trend forecasting versus um, baseball scouting. <laughs> because, you know, there's this whole thing in baseball where scouts think they know more than, than uh, predictive algorithms and, and computer stuff. Uh, it's kind of an interesting, like, human versus machine versus data. And then he has that whole take on Baudrillard, which is as interesting as it can be, where he talks about Baudrillard breaking down different kinds of value, building on marks, you know, exchange value, um, use value, symbolic value, and then Baudrillard talking about, um, uh, talking about symbolic value, how do you express yourself? And it's as good of an explanation of a lot of Baudrillard's thinking as, as, I, as I've ever seen there. More interesting talks too about subculture, talking about subcultures and how they disappeared because of the internet. And this is funny because I teach a class on French rock and roll and hip hop and I actually go back to the 40s. And so much of what I teach is about youth movements. And it always goes back to the same thing. Is this a youth movement or is it just a fashion trend? You know, so I go back to the Zazus who are basically the zoot suitors in, in France. They're almost like Nazi uh, resistors just because they dressed like African-Americans in France, but they were white dudes in Paris. You know, and, and then, then there were these black jackets in the 50s and 60s who were trying to look like Marlon Brando, and then there were the hippies, and then when the hip-hop came out, they were all called the Zulu. It's this fascinating evolution of fashion and subcultures, and he has all these interesting essays about the relationship between the internet and the death of subcultures. This is why I'm talking about, like, you can watch this guy's videos for fashion, or you can go further. He's also refreshingly not particularly materialistic. Like he talks about you know, love yourself, F trends. He talks about not following trends, the importance of buying things cheaply. The main thing that he did for me was he freed me of this belief that in order to love fashion, you have to buy it. I am never, ever going to spend that kind of money on a piece of clothing when I could buy an interesting book, you know, or, or I could buy an interesting poster, okay? Like, like, yeah, I'm a collector, but I'm not a clothes collector, you know? But, but still, like this idea that the world that he presents makes it seem accessible. Uh, other little notes, he's the only person I've ever seen discuss the French performance artist Orlan, O-R-L-A-N. She does like performative, um, performative uh, plastic surgery. <laughs> she once came to the University of California, Santa Barbara, and they needed an interpreter. And so they got me. <laughs> So I was Orlan's interpreter. <laughs> it, uh, I did not quite have the vocabulary at the tip of my tongue to describe a performative plastic surgery person, but I did pretty well. Um, and, and I could just go on. You know, his description of diachronic and synchronic analysis of language and how it applies to fashion, all these great points. And, and I think what I'll close it with is, is that before him, this is the only thing I knew about fashion, is this bag. This is a Louis Vuitton clutch. I want to say it's a clutch. And, and my mom bought it in 1964 on her honeymoon in Cannes, France. Several years later, I went to Cannes, France to the Cannes Film Festival, and she told me to buy her the same bag. So I went and bought this in 1999. So this has been the maximum that I know. I have stared at these bags for hours trying to figure out why are these so great? What is the evolution? What is the consistency? And I sort of get it, you know? I mean, the, the, the different ways that the, the straps are attached, uh, the, the little additional design elements there, like the, there's a geometrical difference, obviously. So we have these kind of same patterns, you know? But like, that was all I knew. And now I know more. So there you go. There, there's my thoughts on Bliss Foster. I'm happy to be on his Patreon. I'm going to keep watching his videos and learning about fashion and increasing my knowledge of human genius. Till next time, there's the camera. <laughs>